Hello and welcome to another pen video for me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have a Visconti Rotary. We have a Magna Carta. This is the Cambridge Limited Edition. We have a Visconti Watermark. We have an Atelia Lusso Carina in the Diamond Nebula. We have a Visconti Chatterley Luxuries, and this is the Southwest. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens Blue Lagoon. We have a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico, and this is in the Lapis Lazuli. We have another Visconti Medici Il Magnifico, and this is in the Black Marble. We have a Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande in the sand. And we have an Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra Wild West. So I think let's take a look at these pens in a little bit more detail. So this is a pen that I actually bought from eBay a number of years ago. And I was taking a lot of risks on eBay. And I saw this pen and it was going for an insane price. It was... I say an insane price. It, it was a, about £150 at the time. Uh, but there was some suggestion that this had some pitting on or, or um, oxidization on the gold trim. And I thought, you know what? Worst case scenario, if this is a, a really bad pen once it arrives, the photos kind of looked okay, but it was a little bit blurred. But if the pen was really bad, then... For £150, I could just use that nib and put it on another pen uh, because at that time, the nib replacements for Visconti were about £230, £250. Anyway, it arrived and it did have a lot of uh, oxidization, but it was it was actually what I found out to be uh, verdigris in the end. So I managed to neutralize verdigris, but it had eaten away at some of this gold plating, uh, unfortunately. But this is a beautiful celluloid pen. Uh, it's a lapis, um, blue lapis uh, material uh, celluloid. But it's a beautiful pen and I love it. And uh, what's more, um, it, it has character. So it has this sort of rotary, if we can get that to focus it, ship's wheel. And it's a commemorative pen for the rotary organization. But what really stands out, so it's 1995 to 2005, what really stands out is the nib. It's a 23 cap palladium fine nib. I wasn't really into fine nibs. I had one on my Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog and it wrote perfectly. So I decided I would get this, this, this pen and the nib writes perfectly. It, it's actually writes better, slightly better than my Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog, which I already love uh, nib-wise. So uh, this is a really beautiful pen. I'm glad, I'm really glad that I bought it. But the the pictures when it arrived, uh, the verdigris was really bad. But I was lucky that I was able to save the pen and treat it and uh, neutralize that verdigris. Uh, so verdigris, if you're not aware will spread uh, and and will eat away at material uh, so so you do need to neutralize it so that pen really was a good buy at that price uh, I wish the seller was a little bit more um, sort of uh, showing the, the the true photos because they were showing some stock photos of a pen that had verdigris on which wasn't the same pen and uh, they, they had a number of these uh, Visconti rotaries for sale. So I don't blame them for that, but I wish they were a little bit more honest and actually did show some of those photos of the, the pen that they were selling because this one turned out to be a lot worse than the one in the photos. And I was very close to sending it back. The next pen I have here is the Magna Carta, and this is the Cambridge in the limited edition. Uh, this is a really lovely pen. If you don't know, the these uh, Magna Carta metal pens, uh, I want to say gold, because they are gold or gold PVD plated um, in 24 karat gold. These are made of brass, so they are very heavy pens plated in P PVD uh, with 
uh, 24 karat gold. Uh, you've got the Magna Carta logo here. Uh, the limited edition is actually also plated with this. I think it's more of a, a ruthenium or ro maybe it's rhodium. Uh, it is a little bit more of a, a darker rhodium though. Uh, but this is a really beautiful pen. Uh, it comes with a number six size nib and this is the Magna Carta in-house nib. It's a broad nib. It's a cartridge converter pen, but I love it. I, I, I have to say I am loving these Magna Cartas. I'm not a particular fan of this very thick clip, but uh, that's maybe just me. Um, I do like that it has character and it does show the pen off. Uh, I think a thinner clip would have been better, but they wanted to be able to spring load these clips. So uh, I think it's it's a very good pen. I think the price point on those pens are good as well. And they're made in India. Uh, the next pen I have inked up this week is the Visconti Watermark. And this is a pen that I like a lot. It was... I want to say one of my first expensive pens. That's not true. I guess the first expensive pens I bought were my Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog and then the next day the Florentine Hills. But this was the first pen that tipped me over a thousand. And I, I like it, but it, it it did take me probably about three or four weeks. Now, uh, you've got a double reservoir ink window here. I've locked that off. So I've got some ink here. Um, it's got a 23 cap palladium medium nib and when I say I've locked that off if I unscrew this and then and then just shake that in you'll see that it now has ink in there so uh, I will just do that and that provides a little bit more ink there uh, but this is a really beautiful pen uh, I like it a lot it is a fingerprint magnet though it's a, a solid silver uh, pen or vermeil um uh, but overlay i should say not vermeil um but it, i guess it is vermeil because it's plated the silver is plated in uh, 23 cap palladium but it is a fingerprint magnet so that's one thing to bear in mind with with those uh, visconti watermarks certainly the silver and i think the gold colored version as well the next pen is the Atelier Luso Carina, and this is in the Diamond Nebula. And you can see that diamond. It's actually made by, the material is made by uh, Mackenzie Penworks, and it's their diamond cast material. So it does have real diamond dust uh, really uh, merged or impregnated into that resin. Um, uh, but this was made uh, by Erica Atelier Luso. Uh, and this is the Karina, and it's a number six size Yovo broad nib. And I do like that a lot. Um, I can post the cap if I want to. Uh, these are light pens from Eric. Um, these are resin pens. Uh, he did this hammered uh, clip here. Uh, the only thing I do find is that this uh, point here is quite sharp. Even though it has been rounded off a little bit, it still is quite sharp. But I like this pen, and I like what Eric did with that pen. Uh, it is a really, really nice uh, pen there. The next pen I have inked up is the Visconti, and this is a Chatterley Luxuries exclusive, and this is the Southwest. And uh, this is made of the same celluloid that was used in the Visconti Speakeasy and the Visconti St. Basil. And I think there was also a Chatterley Luxuries exclusive in an Opera Master uh, in this material, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but this is a beautiful celluloid. So this is a lovely sort of uh, blend of reds, blacks and blues. And uh, it really is a beautiful pen. And you can see that it's also faceted as well. Uh, and you do have a... Uh, sort of southwest skyline there uh, this has the hook safe lock mechanism from Visconti um, and it's got a newer style 18 cat gold medium nib you've got a concave section here it's a single reservoir it's not a double reservoir like the Visconti watermark um, but it's a power vac filler and I love this pen a lot and I love that nib uh, that nib writes exquisitely well for me uh, and it, it's 
it's something that I I I don't know. I I hear so many people complain about Visconti's and yes, I have had a few problems with Visconti's. I, I don't deny that, but I have over seventy pens and I wanna say probably I've had ten percent or less issues. Um so less than seven old pen seven pens or less that I've had issues with. Yes, now and again a power vac needs to be greased or uh, the O-ring or seal needs to be replaced. Um, yes, I've had uh, some silver sections, chrome sections rust uh, on a Visconti Opera, but like literally out of 70 pens, 7 pens is not bad. And, and most of them have been fixed by Visconti for free, excluding obviously the, the cost of postage to them. So I have to give them uh, really some praise there because... Uh, I, I do 70 pens, that's that's a pretty good good uh, sort of uh, whack there. And, and honestly, uh, I continue to buy more. Uh, the next pen I have inked up is the Visconti Homo Sapiens, and this is the Blue Lagoon. And this is a beautiful pen. You can see that ink sloshing around in that body there. Um, strange enough, this is a Diamine Aqua Lagoon I've got inked up, but... Any ink will look black um, unless you're going to use like a yellow or a, maybe an orange ink. Um, now, this uh, has also the newer style 18 karat gold medium nibs from Visconti. Uh, I do find this is one of only, uh, I think I have about five or six of the newer 18 karat gold nibs from Visconti. And this is the only one that where the tines were really, really tight. Uh, and I have lost it a little bit. Um, and I. I do uh, um, probably need to floss it a little bit more, but uh, I'm starting to find that that is writing a lot better. And I think this is where a lot of people have issues, quality issues with Visconti, is that sometimes there is a huge difference or variance between writing nibs. And and that can happen, and I have had that. Um, but I know how to sort of enhance that nib uh, using brass shims to open the tines to make it right wetter if it's a little bit scratchy or uh, pencil feedback then i know how to smooth that out so uh, for me i would rather do that than than send the pen back and uh, do that and have a pen that actually writes really well the next pen is a uh, visconti and this is the medici il magnifico this is in the lapis lazuli so this is a solid silver pen and solid marble. The silver is actually vermeil, so it's a gold uh, plated there. So you've got the Visconti logo there. Um, and if I remove the cap, you'll see a gold colored section, which is silver. And you've got the newer 18 cat gold medium nibs there. Um, this is a heavy pen and this cap, I want to say weighs almost as much as the pen. Uh, so you can post these caps, but you really don't want to because that's really how I would want to write with this if I had that cap uh, posted because it is very, very weighty. Uh, this comes with a power vac. It's a single reservoir, so it's not a double reservoir. There's no ink window. You've got the hook safe lock mechanism. Uh, I love this pen. I love it a lot. Um, the nib sings a little bit strangely, uh, but... Uh, and it depends on which paper I use it on. If I use it on Tenray River, it doesn't sing as much. But other paper, it can sing on uh, if you've got a little bit of texture to that paper. Um, I don't have many nibs that sing. Uh, I do have a few, though. And uh, I'm not normally partial to a singing nib. However, I really love how this one writes. So uh, that's a medium nib. But it writes more like a Western broad to me. The next pen is another Visconti Medici Il Magnifico, and this is in the black marble. Uh, I think this has a name to it, but in a lot of cases online, the retailers and Visconti are not actually naming this. They're just calling it the black marble. But this is a really, really beautiful black and bronze or black and gold. It really, really is a beautiful pattern. So these are faceted. Uh, 
you have the floor de lis there as well uh, that you can see. Um, so, and then you've also got the uh, Medici as well. So uh, this is a really, really nice uh, pen. And again, this is solid silver, but it's uh, coated or um, plated vermeil. Uh, and this is more of a bronze uh, rather than a gold. Uh, this has a newer 18 karat gold medium nib. Again, single reservoir, uh, power vac filler, uh, hook safe lock mechanism, uh, the concave section. I find that these are very similar to the Visconti Homo sapiens in terms of the, the size. Uh, they're just more heavier. Uh, but I love this a lot. And uh, this one writes really, really nicely as well. So I have that one inked up this week. And then a pen that I had, I think I had it inked up last week, was this one. It's a Leonardo Officina Italiana Memento Zero Grande in the Sand. Uh, this is number 154. It's a numbered edition. It's not limited. Uh, but this is a really beautiful pen. Uh, I love this material. They basically take varying colors uh, and slice them into layers and then glue them back together uh, and then cut the rods in a... Uh, different direction to create this layered approach it's a really nice effect um, this has a uh, Leonardo uh, it's a Bock steel nib uh, it's a medium nib number six size nib uh, these are captured converters so it's a much wider converter so you cannot remove this and put a cartridge on but uh, that is uh, holds a lot more ink um, I wasn't a fan of this to start with, the, the captured converters, although I have to say I think Leonardo did it well. My The reason why I'm not a fan of it is that I have had other pistons uh, that have unglued from other pen manufacturers, and I know that that will probably unglue itself at some point and have to be re-glued. It's an easy task to re-glue it, but uh, still it, it's, it could be a hassle over time. So I would much prefer a, a piston or a cartridge converter. And Leonardo have now actually switched to, to actually doing pistons. So um, that is a good sign, I think, as well. Although I have to say I do like that captured converter there. And then the last pen that I have inked up is this one. It's an Armando Simone Club. It's a Bologna. It's the Extra. And this is the... You can see it there wild west and you can see a wild west skyline on that cap band but this is a beautiful pen let's just look at that chatoyance going on there between the reds and the blues again this is a similar approach to the material uh, used in the leonardo uh, again it's a resin it's not celluloid but uh, the the way that this has been layered is beautiful so uh, this is another pen that I have inked up this week and you can see there it's got a red ink in that pen uh, it's got an Armando Simone Club it's a number eight size nib there it's a magic flex nib uh, these are not pistons these are not power back they're not com cartridge converters uh, these are pneumatic uh, pen fillers so these do have a latex or rubber sack inside them uh, but this, uh, I love how wet these write. So for me, this is a beautiful, beautiful writer. So that's my currently inked pens for this week. I think let's now go do a writing sample. So the first pen is the Visconti Rotary. And we'll do an ink swatch here. Now, this is a fine nib, but it has some bounce to it. And it's also quite a wet nib as well. So uh, this is a nib that I really, really uh, enjoy writing with. So this is the Visconti and it's the Rotary. Now this is a medium. You just see a little bit of line variation there. Uh, and it's an, uh, I think it's an original 18, is it 18 karat gold? Yeah, it's 18 cat gold. I may have actually said it was 23 cat palladium, actually. Uh, so it's 18 cat gold. Uh, the ink in here is 
uh, Rora and Klinger. And it is Blue Mare, which is a lovely sort of turquoisey cerulean blue ink. And it's just an ink that I love writing with. So it goes on almost like a slightly light blue and it fades to a much lighter blue. The next pen inked up is the Magna Carta Cambridge Limited Edition. So we'll do an ink swatch. And you can see that this is probably uh, a fairly wet nib. Now, the Magna Cartas do actually have ebonite feeds. So this is the Magna Carta, and it's the Cambridge, and it's the LE, or limited edition. Uh, it's got a broad, it's a steel nib, it's an in-house Magna Carta nib. And then the ink in here is Diamine, and it's Apple Glory, which is actually an ink that I hadn't been writing with a lot um, over the last year. And I decided I needed, I, I, I've only had one, I think one, maybe two bottles of that, maybe two, but I only have one now. And I decided I just needed to write with that ink more. The next pen is the Visconti Watermark. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now, this is a interesting ink. Uh, it's an orange ink that I used to use a lot. And again, it's one I've not used a lot lately. It's a, this pen is a Visconti Watermark. And it's got a medium 23 cap palladium nib on there. The ink that I haven't used a lot, but I used to, and I used to like it, is Pilot Oroshizuku. And it's Yuyaki. It's a bright orange, and uh, it behaves very well. I have not had this uh, massively crust up in, uh, in a nib when I've left it inked up for a while. Um, it, it will crust if you left it in there for a couple of months, but... Uh, again, not as much as some other inks. Uh, so I like that ink a lot. The next pen is the Atelier Luso Carina in the Diamond Nebula. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I find that this ink is uh, quite a viscous ink, um, but it can be quite wet as well. So this is an Atelier Luso Carina, and it's in the Diamond Nebula. And it's a broad and it's a steel nib. And then the ink in here is uh, Monteverde. And it's Blueberry Muffin, which I still honestly don't think this is a blue ink. However, I did do a bit of research online, and apparently you can get blueberry muffins that are more of a of this color. And uh, they, they are actually missing uh, some part of its DNA or something. I can't remember what it was exactly, but... Uh, you can get them that a little bit more of this sort of reddish colour instead of blue. So uh, maybe that's really when Monteverde made that ink, maybe that was all they really knew of blueberries. <laughs> Possibly, I don't know. The next pen inked up is the Visconti Chastley Luxury Southwest. Let's do an ink swatch. And... I think I said that I absolutely love how this nib writes. Uh, it's the newer 18 karat gold nibs from Visconti. And I do. I absolutely love how it writes. So this is the Visconti. And it's a Chatterley 
luxuries southwest and it's a medium 18 cap gold nib and then the ink in here is Mont Blanc and it's corn poppy red and this is an ink that actually goes on fairly bright red but then turns to more of a probably more of a crimson or bordeauxy red um it, it it will dry darker the next pen is the visconti homo sapiens blue lagoon so we'll do an ink swatch now this is again one of the newer 18 karat golden from visconti i have flossed these times a lot i do want to floss them more to make it a wetter writer uh, i think part of this is that i'm using a dry ink i think also that this uh the times are tight as well and i, I do need to probably open those up a little bit uh, this does write more like a fine as well so i think there's a number of combinations actually making it right dry so this is the visconti and it's the homo sapiens oops put an eye there and it's the blue lagoon and it's a medium 18 cap gold nib and then the ink in here as i mentioned is diamine aqua lagoon and some of these pens uh, do have more blue in them. Some of them have more green in them. Mine is one that has a lot of blue and green, which I am really liking a lot. The next pen is the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the Lapis Lazuli. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now, in comparison, this is another newer Visconti 18 karat gold nib and it's a medium nib so here you can see two medium nibs side by side so this is the Visconti and it's the uh, Medici Il Magnifico and it's the Lapis Lazuli and it is a medium 18 cat gold nib and then the ink in here is pilot Iroshizuku Aji Sei but you can see here that these are two of the new Visconti 18 cat gold nibs yet one is very fine and very dry and the other one is very broad and, and very wet so there is still some consistency um i don't know if i want to call them issues but i guess it is consistency issues uh with some of those newer visconti nibs as there were with the 23 cap palladium nibs but irrespective of that i still like them the next pen is the visconti medici il magnifico in the black marble so we'll do an ink swatch here now, this, again, is another 18 karat gold, newer, medium nib. And you can see here that this is quite wet. Uh, so this is the Visconti uh, Medici Il Magnifico. And this is in the black uh, marble. Um, and it's a... Again, another medium 18 cat gold new nib. And then the ink in here is Diamine Earl Grey. But for me, that writes more like a medium. This writes more like a board. That writes more like a fine. So, yes, there is a, a difference there uh, in those nibs and how they write. The next pen inked up uh, this week is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Memento Zero Grande in the sand. I will abbreviate that because that is a mouthful. 
Uh, and we'll do an ink swatch here. And this is a beautiful ink. It does sheen as well. It has a bit of a gold sheen to it. So I'm going to abbreviate this to Leonardo uh, Memento Zero Grande in the Sand. Uh, it's a medium. It's a uh, steel bock nib. I believe Leonardo have switched mostly to Yovo now. They may still have some Bok nibs though. Uh, this is, uh, the ink in here is simply Leonardo purple, which uh, for me is a beautiful purple ink. And then the last pen here is the Armando Simonica Bologna Extra, and this is the Wild West. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And you can just see here how wet this nib writes. So I'm going to abbreviate this to ASC for Armando Simone Club, Bologna Extra, and it's the uh, Wild West. It's a medium 18 cat gold nib. It's a magic flex nib. And then the ink in here is a diamine poppy red, which is a beautiful, punchy, a vibrant red ink from diamine. So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up one more time. So we have a Visconti Rotary in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Aurora and Klinger Blue Mare. We have a Magna Carta Cambridge Limited Edition in a broad steel nib inked up with Diamine Apple Glory. We have a Visconti Watermark in a medium 23 cat Palladium nib inked up with Pilot Roche Suzuki Uyaki. We have an Atelier Lusso Carina in the Diamond Nebula in a broad steel nib inked up with Monteverde Blueberry Muffin. We have a Visconti Chatterley Luxuries Exclusive, and this is a Southwest in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Mont Blanc Corn Poppy Red. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens Blue Lagoon in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Diamine Aqua Lagoon. We have a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the Lapis Lazuli in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Pilot Roche Zuku Adise. We have a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the black marble in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Diamine Earl Grey. We have a Leonardo Memento Zero Grande in the sand in a medium steel nib inked up with Leonardo Purple. And then we have an Armando Simonica Bologna Extra Wild West in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Diamine Poppy Red. So there you have it. That's my current ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.